I enjoyed a treat last week, my dear sister, which, great as it was, I would have willingly transferred to you, from the consideration that you were enabled both by nature and education to enjoy it more exquisitely than I could without your advantages. And this was a view of some of the finest paintings ever in America. Mr. Calvert of Bladensburg went to Antwerp, where he married a Ms. Steers, whose father, a descendant of Rubens and an enthusiastic devotee of art, became possessed of several masterpieces of the great Fleming, to which were added Titians, Vanderlands, and other undoubted originals, in all about forty specimens of the old masters. And Mr. Calvert, inasmuch as such an opportunity might never again occur to the citizens of Washington, invited all connoisseurs and amateurs to come for five days and gratify their taste and curiosity. Sarah Gill Seaton's note to her sister opens a window onto a fascinating chapter in the history of Riversdale. Her excitement echoed that of many visitors to the Calvert home in April 1816 who, for a short time, enjoyed the opportunity to drink in European masterworks by famous artists such as Anthony van Dyck, Jan Bruegel, and, especially, Peter Paul Rubens, whose direct descendant, Henri Joseph Steer, brought both his collection and his family from his home in Antwerp in 1794. In 1803, he left the collection to remain in the care of his daughter Rosalie and her husband George Calvert until such time as Europe was free of Napoleon's terror and his rapacious hunger for beautiful art. The exhibition, which truly contained the finest paintings in America in 1816, was the first time that most of the works had been removed from their crates since they first arrived in 1794. Rosalie only relented to show the works shortly before returning them to her father in June of 1816. Here, on the 200th anniversary of this remarkable exhibition in this remarkable house, historian Susan Pearl reflects on this fascinating episode with Arthur K. Wheelock, Jr., curator of Northern Baroque painting at the National Gallery of Art and professor of art history at the University of Maryland. It's fascinating to think what it had been like to be a visitor coming yeah. to Riversdale and seeing this collection. And, and we don't have a lot of information, but we have some. And we, yes, and we, we know have. that there was huge excitement yes. for those who came. And there were a couple of responses of people who you know, talked about these artists that they saw yeah. in these great works. And you could imagine, because there were not paintings of this quality or even these artists to be seen in America. That That's what kind of sense of excitement there was that, uh, you know, seeing them and responding and thinking about it and going back and talking, mm -hmm. you know, at tea or yes. dinner the next yes. night or the next yes. week. And you can just see the kind of ripple effect of, of excitement that sort of, you know, comes from this opportunity of five days, yeah. one week, two weeks, or whatever, whatever it, was it was that allowed people <laughs> to get there. But it seems that there was enough time lapsed because, of, as you mentioned, there was no written announcement that this thing mm -hmm. was uh, available. It was all word of mouth. Yes. So you can imagine it would have come in bits and pieces and pockets and, and people would have gone and then would have had their reactions, yes. gone back, and more people would have come. And I love the, the in several of the contemporary writings about it, they talk about how interesting it was to see the artists, the painters, and the art lovers in discussion about specific paintings, which uh, arguing about which ones were the most wonderful. <laughs> and, um, so I can just imagine groups of people standing in front of a painting yeah, and, yeah. and is that portrait by Philip? Uh, is that portrait of Philip by Rubens or Van Dyck? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I find it really fascinating the care with which the family maintained that collection. They really tried to keep it safe. Yes. And they knew the importance of this legacy. They knew how, how significant this collection oh, was. Oh, absolutely. And it's such fun to read through the letters. And in practically every letter that goes back and forth between father and daughter, father in Antwerp and daughter Rosalie at Riversdale, there is mention of the paintings and how important they are. The Roman charity is a diamond beyond price and the Van Dyck portraits are the oh, best. Yeah. Best ever. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and the best best preserved. And watch out for them. Be sure there are no rats, no mildew. Yeah. And she's very careful about it and very cautious. 
I mean, the fact that she didn't want people to see them because she feared crowds of... I know. Of, it's really uh, fascinating. Yes. And yet they were known, obviously. When they were shown uh, before yes. they went back, the sort of overarching excitement of Absolutely. people that these paintings could be seen now. And they were known by artists up and down the East Coast. So you have artists... Come, commenting yes. how important these paintings are and we, you know how wonderful it is that they are here and and Peel um, saying you've yeah. got to exhibit them you've got to let people yes. see them before they go back so well, those was, were the only people the, the painters whom the the Calverts met were so impressed with what they saw what few they saw of this collection and many of those American painters had of course studied in Europe sure so they knew a little bit about it, but they were the ones who talked them into opening the house yeah. in April of 1816. I'm intrigued by the fact that uh, Rosalie occasionally would open the cases yes. and would care for them, wipe them with a the silk, silk cloth. Silk yes. How did she know to do that? How did she because know? Because he told her every every letter. That check on those, pa those no, paintings. To how sure. to, but how did care for it when she did oh. discover? I mean, so I'm thinking that there may have been more discussion with art authorities, artists, or whether about how you care for something, what you should look for. Well, than we know about. I mean, I think the letters are great, and there's amazing amount yes. of information, but. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, exclude the uh, the fact that there were discussions outside the letters, and that they helped inform not yes. only Rosalie about the collection, but also people outside yeah. the family. Oh, I feel sure that 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 is absolutely true, and she even talks about calling on people like Sully and Charles Burke King, and we know that um, that Gilbert Stewart spent. I think two weeks at Riversdale doing the portraits in eight, the summer mm -hmm. of 1804. Mm -hmm. And uh, George Henry Calvert, the son, in his autobiography talks about uh, Mr. Stewart right. helping with the, the paintings. So yes, I think she did have some advice. And I think she was brought up in, the, in a, a home that, that respected great art. So she probably learned a lot just as a child. Well, that could be too. In Antwerp, yeah. and certainly right. her brother Charles, who becomes a, a, an important collector himself, he was, well, he was appointed to that commission. He was an yeah. considered right. an authority right. on the subject. So they must have um, known the value of the paintings and known something about how to take care of them. She was. Clearly, in terms of a business sense, knew that these were valuable. Yes. And um, yeah. that there was an asset that they needed to take care of. That um, she was one reason she was resistant of having too many of them on view. I think mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. damaged, but yeah. she was worried about them being damaged, even being in the cases because they didn't get right. air to That's breathe, right. and they had the mold that was growing on them. So. But, but I think it's all in terms of this is a, a valuable asset we have to take care of. Absolutely. And she was very much aware of the fact that it was highly unusual. But that's, that, yeah, that, that, right. That there just wasn't anything else Particularly like Particularly in this that. country mm -hmm. with right. not a lot yeah. of social graces. <laughs> <laughs> Though she did go to all the levees at the White House. And, but, yeah, you know, they, they, she certainly lived uh, with, a, yeah. with a world yes. of the upper yeah. echelon of of the political yes. and social world and the ambassadors and she, yes. she knew yes, them. And they, and they met a lot of important people yeah. um, and socialized to a certain extent. I think George Calvert was very busy with his his business starting the what became the the, the, the uh, turnpike um, up and down the East Coast and his banking business and of course just running a plantation, a huge plantation, and it wasn't his only plantation. Um, so he was a busy man too, but she was, I, I am in awe 
of her business yeah, sense. Yeah, so it's of course, she amazing. was instructed by her father that he, she had to to uh, manage his assets right. in the United States, right. and uh, I think she did much more of that than George Calvert did for him. But well, I was interested that he had an opportunity to become governor of oh. Maryland, and, and she dissuaded she, him yes. from that. And she didn't. Why? Really, why do you think that was the case? I don't know. She does talk about the politics, the government. She was not keen on no, politics. No, she was not. She was not. But you think that that, those, that time politics did allow you a certain amount of benefits, financial that's benefits, right. and you know whatever prestige benefits that would not have mm -hmm. that would have fit within her yes uh, her own aspirations. But maybe it would take him too much away from his business. She I saw the sort of day-to-day so. -day business responsibility. I suppose so. I, I don't know. But you're right. She would not have been in favor of that. And it is interesting that until the open house, the larger, more valuable paintings were kept um, stored over the coach room in the, at Riversdale and not shown. What is curious to me is um, Papa Steer chides her for turning the West Wing into a coach house and a stable when it could have been an art gallery. Yeah. And yet George Calvert, uh, when it is first suggested that the, the paintings be shown to the public, he says, oh, her father would would disinherit my wife if we really? brought in the crowds. So that's, I, I haven't quite figured out no, that. No, that doesn't make sense <laughs> because he really does want that, that no, well, cabinet to, sh to show that's these That's right. Books. And he writes to her several times in the letters, uh, the best thing, let's see, for your education, if you form a cabinet, it will be a very good thing. And I have been buying uh, yeah. paintings for you in Europe with the intention of giving them to you. And it, it would be a very valuable thing for you to do. And she says, oh, but I'm afraid to. I, I'm afraid to have too many people yeah. aware yeah. of what I might it's have. It's sort of interesting, her personality, because she clearly is a very practical lady, very much involved yes. in business oh, yes. and, and yes. The shipments of tobacco yes. to, to England yeah. or to she, Amsterdam. And, um, and the art, I never quite figured out exactly how she and Art fit together because I think her care of taking uh, her response felt feeling of responsibility for the yes. the house, the property, the maintenance of um, the business seemed yeah. to be the predominant yes. aspect yes. of her personality, and she really didn't like the the. the she didn't think there was much of a social life in uh, in around uh, Washington. Um, she did not like the Democrats that were there. <laughs> That's right. And um, and so she was a very practical and yeah. lady. And I think the art. I, I suspect she, if you know, if she had a greater in you know internal love of the art. She might have built that collectors that that. Yes. Exhibition area, but she, she, what did she build instead? It was the, it was the, the coach room the and the stable, room. even the yeah. stable in part yeah. of that wing. Yeah. And it's a little bit unclear just how the larger paintings were stored. Um, the letter that describes it, unfortunately, I've never seen the original French. I've only seen a translation, and the word is platform, mm -hmm. um, a platform over the coach room. Not really on the second floor, because in other places they talk about it being on the ground floor.